Hello, and thank you for joining this targeted oncology presentation titled Targeted Therapy in Early Stage HER2 Positive Breast Cancer. The last few years have really been quite exciting from the treatment of HER2 positive breast cancer with new and improved targeted therapy. Today, we're going to talk about the expanding role of treatment options in early HER2 amplified breast cancer. I'm Dr. Erica Hamilton, and I'm the director of the Breast Cancer Research Program of the Sarah Cannon Research Institute. Joining me is Dr. Stephanie Graff, Director of the Breast Program at the Sarah Cannon Research Institute at HCA Midwest Health and the Associate Director of the Breast Cancer Research Program at Sarah Cannon Research Institute. Thanks so much for joining us and let us get started. So first, I think we're gonna talk a little bit just about defining the role of HER2 positive breast cancer in general. Yeah, I think uh, there's been a lot going on in the HER2 space, which is really exciting. I think we're kind of have some excitement and new drug development happening. And so it's a really good, important time for us to be coming together and talking about this. Um, you know, right now we, we have several really uh, wonderful drugs that have built on the trastuzumab story. We have pertuzumab, we have antibody drug conjugates, we have um, new generation of anti-HER2 uh, anti directed therapy all emerging. Um, I think one of the first things that we really have want to explore though, Erica, is kind of the background of her, how we got here. So can you say a little bit about how HER2 gene amplification really drives the breast cancer story? Yeah, absolutely. So, um, you know, HER2 is human epidermal growth factor receptor 2, and it helps um, you know, control healthy uh, cell division, growth, repair, and overexpression of this in, in cells and in tumor cells really increases the growth rate. So we know that HER2 amplified cancers tend to be aggressive cancers and they tend to be cancers that grow, grow quite rapidly. So I think this is important to recognize because it used to be a very bad or poor prognosis cancer, and now we have very effective therapies that help improve this quite a bit. Yeah, and I think it's important to recognize that not only is HER2 expression prognostic in that historically HER2 positive cancers of any type, not just breast, do behave more poorly, um, but it's also predictive. So obviously we know that these medicines that target the HER2 uh, all the HER2 targeted antibody therapy improve outcomes when they're given. And, and the story extends beyond just what we see in breast oncology, which is our focus today. But we see HER2 positivity in GI malignancies, including colorectal and gastric cancer, as we see it in other rare uh, tissue types. And uh, ERBB2 expression is pretty commonly found when we do more sophisticated genomic profiling across metastatic cancer types or early stage cancer types. And so definitely a role to expand some of the drugs we're talking about today beyond just the breast cancer space. Absolutely. So let's talk a little bit about the role of not HER2 amplifications or overexpression, but really about somatic mutations. Yeah, so I mean, somatic mutation means that it's a mutation on the cancer itself, not germline mutation. So my genes are what's passed down uh, parent to child. And we find those somatic mutations, again, across tumor types. And the various different HER2 mutations ultimately end up having a role in resistance and how, these, how cancers develop resistance to HER2. And they also have a, a role in how these medicines work together in terms of which portions of the HER2 entity is being bound by the by the antibody or the antibody drug conjugate. And so, so there's a lot of detail at play when we're talking about HER2. It's easy to think of it as a nice, clean, um, one-piece uh, solution, but ultimately there's a bunch of different isoforms and there's a bunch of different mutations um, and ligands that can change over time as patients gain exposure to the various different compounds. Um, in particular, in terms of resistance, we've seen resistance in terms of alternate isoforms develop. We've seen uh, tumors that develop increased ligand production. So we see just a higher ratio of HER2 expression to sort of overcome the antibody um, uh, expression. And then we also can see mutations in the intracellular signaling process. 
through the HER2 uh, compound. And so there's a lot of different opportunities as we continue through drug development to improve for patients who have developed resistance to trastuzumab. Absolutely. And so, you know, are, are there any prognostic or predictive value? You know, what about other tumor subtypes outside of breast? Do you think that this is going to be actionable and something that we're going to be thinking more about in the future? Yeah, definitely. And, and again, the, HER2 has turned out to be both prognostic and predictive in a variety of tumor types where we see that not only are HER2 amplified tumors doing more poorly without HER2-directed therapy, but the expression of HER2 in a variety of different strategies, regardless of whether that's immunohistochemical staining or FISH or um, identification of a genomic or somatic uh, mutation, um, predicts a response to HER2-targeted therapy. And so I think better stratifying and understanding the HER2 landscape across cancer types, not just breast, is going to be vital as we continue uh, to better define and explore rare cancer subtypes. In your practice, what percentage of tumors have you seen, Dr. Hamilton, that have HER2 alterations? Yeah, you know, in the breast cancer world, we commonly think that this is probably around 15%, um, and that stayed pretty steady over time. We also see um, a higher rate of HER2 amplifications in GI tumors, like gastric, even colorectal, and to a smaller degree, cancer such as lung and other cancers. So, you know, we, we have had trastuzumab since the 1990s for breast cancer, and we also have approvals for trastuzumab uh, in, you know, GI malignancies as well. But I think, you know, increasing now that we're getting more agents in the HER2 space, trastuzumab deruxtecan comes to mind. Some of the tyrosine kinase inhibitors have had, um, you know, recent uh, reports of activity and colorectal, et cetera. I think we're going to see more options for these tumor types outside of breast. Um, trastuzumab deruxtecan is certainly expanding into other tumor types um, and has presented some really great results. Same with tocatinib and colorectal cancer. So I think this is really an emerging field where, you know, in 2020, sometimes we're worrying a little bit less about where did the cancer come from and instead asking the question of what makes this particular cancer tick and how can we stop it from growing? Yeah, that precision medicine storyline was so um, on display at ASCO 2020 annual meeting where we saw an entire clinical science symposium sort of dedicated to genomic profiling and how it can help us define cancer types. So I, I definitely think that's the direction that our field um, in oncology globally is taking to, to sort of figure out what is going on biologically with the tumor and try to best address it with targeted therapy. Absolutely.